Hello, everyone. <laughs> you missed it again, teddy bear. Hi, everyone. It's Rita from Miss Rita to the Rescue here for our Friday edition of Cricket Chat. Um, it's our daily program that we uh, talk about cricket. We do all kinds of cricket projects. And um, today is no different. We're on Friday, and on Fridays we usually do a 3D type of a project. And so today, hi Susan, hi Lisa, hi Roslyn, how are you? How are you all? So on Fridays we do, um, we seem to have fallen into a pattern of doing 3D uh, type of project. So he, we um, get away from the card making, general card making, and we do something that's a little more uh, bigger and a little more 3D. Good morning, Shirley. Um, and so today I thought that we would do um, rosettes because they are beautiful. They're dazzling, really. And um, I love to make them year round. Good morning. Um, and so I wanted to show you how to do them. They're not really that difficult. They are a little time consuming. <laughs> um, and you have to kind of get in the mode. It's sort of like when I, when I think about making rosettes, it reminds me of the curled flowers, you know, the rolled flowers, because um, those, you have to sort of be in the mood to do those, and you have to kind of develop your own little routine with them, and that's the same thing for rosettes, um, and so that's, I wanted to go over that. Now, for this project, you're going to need a glue gun. Hi, Lori. Hi, Guadalupe. Hello, Deborah. Um, and we're going to need a glue gun. Now, I, I am, I am a little bit glue gun adverse. So, um, I, I'm going to try with this glue gun that, that my friend Sancho gave me. <laughs> um, I don't know if it's going to work. It's one of these big industrial type of glue gun, but I'm going to show you sort of start to finish how to um, cut these out and put them together. They're really fun. Here's one that I did just before coming on. Um, the, so this is a rosette. It is a, a bunch of pieces of paper that look like this that are scored at regular intervals. And then you take them all, you cut out like strips like this. This one has a tab on the side and you um, you fold them all like an accordion, right? And then when you have them all folded, and there's usually like six, five or six of these pieces that you put together. When you have them all folded, you turn them into a strip. You attach them at that tab to each other and you turn them into a very long strip. And then in one little fell swoop, you will um, push it down into a circle. It takes practice. Um, and then that's when the, when the glue gun comes in and you will, um, you will glue it closed, but but it, there you're working against a little bit of uh, resistance there, gravity. I don't know what it's called, but you you are working against it. So I'm going to show you a little bit on how to do that. And by far, I think the most important thing about this is just having patience, because um, patience is is what got me through this anyway. So this is a rosette. It's all made out of paper and just a little bit of glue. I chose um, some Valentine's Day one uh, papers, but I also cut out an enormous amount of um, different papers, including some solids. I think I might sneeze here for a sec. I might sneeze in a second. So pardon me if I do. Um, <laughs> And uh, so I cut them all out yesterday afternoon, and my thought process was I was going to go for something like this. It's a rosette background um, <clears throat> where they're all um, <clears throat> they're all sort of connected um, together, and I want to put it as um, in my living room 
over this floor to, you know, ceiling mirror that I have. So I was going to use it as kind of like a backdrop. Um, yeah, so this is a project that <clears throat> once you get it cut out, there's a lot of folding <laughs> involved. And so um, you give yourself patience to fold everything because you do want them to fold um, correctly, okay? And, uh, and so, and then once you get them all, so it's, it's in steps, you cut it out, you fold everything, then you connect it and then you make the rosettes. Okay. Um, and so that's the thought process. Now you might remember we did some rosettes. Actually, we did these ones, these snowflake ornaments. And I think that's what I like so much about rosettes is that they are versatile, um, there's a lot of different rosette patterns out there and they're easy to, um, to do once you can, you know, know where to look for them. There, um, there's all kinds of different ideas as well. Like for instance, you could put them on a lolly, like a lollipop like this, um, or you can use it as half of a rosette for a banner. Look at this one. This is on, um, this is truly on a lollipop. It's a rosette. I don't know if the picture's going to come out for me. Yeah, here it is. Well, it's not coming out, but it is actually a bunny cut out that um that you put on top of a rosette and then you place it on one of those giant lollipops, right? And rosettes can be used for banners, can be used for cupcakes, it can be used for tops of packages. So it's a really great little thing to know how to do. Maybe you're not going to make a gazillion of them, but um <clears throat> but it's really they're fun and they're easy to do. Just follow all the steps and be patient. Hi Robin. My husband got me a joy. I did get it out of the box. Yeah, just get it out of the box, plug it in and we're we're good to go. Got plenty of videos and while I'm here, I'll say hello to all my friends. Hi Diana. Um hi Annette. Okay, so I'll say hello to all my friends. Also want to remind you if you aren't already following me on YouTube, please remember to subscribe because we're going to be doing some giveaways that require you to be following me on YouTube. I heard back from a few people saying that um, some of you don't use Facebook. So this is for the people that are watching on YouTube. Um, we'll, we'll do some things for you, okay? Um, okay, so the road, the idea of the rosette, it's very, it's, it's very versatile, right? So you can put, you can shape them into little areas, uh, little different things. And you know who's really good at rosettes is Anna. Um, and she has an entire cartridge or sorry image set devoted to um, scoring wheel tricks and here's one of them so it can be used in scrapbooks um, and all kinds of different things so let's get started um, I'm going to go here to my canvas now this is actually from uh, from one of those projects we just looked hi Nicole from Rhode Island oh good I'm glad um so this is from one of those projects, but I actually made it a lot simpler because every time I went to cut it, it would tell me the machine, if you've never noticed this, but when you have really large projects, the, the um, design space will say, whoa, that's a large project. So I got kind of sick of seeing that. So <laughs> so I, I changed this. This actually started off as, um, let me see if I can find it. It just started off as this rosette uh the very basic rosette but I just um whittled it down to three sized rosettes and I used that same thing now the cool thing about the rosettes is that you can change up the way they look on the end um now this one here is is exactly what you see on the screen it's like a bracket and it works out pretty well that way the bracket um but i've seen some some designs that have like different things like stars and some are really fancy um but these do take quite a bit to cut out so um so i would maybe try simple to start okay um 
And let's see. So what I did is I put together this this file, or I streamlined this file into three different sizes. So these, this is one. That's the largest one. There's the medium, and this is the small. And you'll notice. Let's take apart one of these groupings. Um, this is the small one. So let's ungroup this. And so you'll see here are two little circles. Those circles are important. Don't um, ignore making them because that's how they hold together, okay? Um, you don't have to necessarily cut it out in the same color. You could change the color um, and or you could do what I did, which was I cut out two in di two different colors and then I switch. So for instance, I cut out this pattern and and with the circles in this pattern and then I did it also in green and then I'm just going to switch so that my green rosette will have this for a circle to kind of give it some visual interest okay so it's up to you what you want to do um, I'm using some valentine's paper also using some cardstock just like cricket cardstock I'm going to use my maker today to cut these um, but you can cut these with the explore but you will need a scoring stylus. Um, and you can actually also cut these with the uh, the joy. However, um, you will need to score them yourself. Okay, which is simple to do. Um, I don't I don't have my scoring board with me, but it just requires a scoring board. And I can show you at another time on how to do scoring um, from a cutout that you've done like this. Okay, so... At any rate, here it is. There is the two circles, and then you have these six pieces, exact length. Um, and you notice that they have a lot of scoring in there. You see that? And we're going to cut them all out. And it's super simple to do, so let me show you. By the way, if you are looking for projects that have um, the rosettes on them. I want to just show you two image sets, okay? That, um, let's see, I'm going to group this together again. Group. I want to show you two sets that, um, that I really like for rosettes, okay? Hi, Perlita. Can you use party foil? Can I use party foil on these? might be hard. I haven't ever tried it, but it might be a little bit difficult. I'm not sure if you can score on party foil. Um, I Maybe. So the answer is maybe, and I can try it. Okay. Um, so here we're going to go to images. I just want to show you where you can find these if, um, if you're looking. So we're going to go to image sets. You see here, this is a general image search, but over here on the left hand side under highlighted categories is image sets. And if we type in, uh, the word rosette, you will find two images, two uh, sets of images, image sets. One is called ribbons and rosettes, and the other one's called scoring wheel rosettes. And these are the ones that have the different uh, different shapes. So this is like the heart one. Look at an apple one, uh, star, and things like that. This is the original, um, the original image set, ribbons and rosettes, and you can see all of these. And actually, they're kind of small, so it's hard to see all of the different designs. But there are some that use cutouts, and there's some that use a really fancy edge. So if you're looking for rosettes, there are those two. And also, um, there is uh, Anna Griffin, as I mentioned. I'm going to see if I can't get Anna has uh, something called scoring wheel tricks. And that is right here, Anna's scoring wheel tricks. And it has a lot of rosettes on here. And that uses the scoring wheel, including these other cutouts, as well as a number of other really fun projects. Okay, so I will give you um, I will give you the, uh, this file, but just so you know, you don't have to just get my file. You can make this yourself by looking for those images either on under projects or an image set. So let's say we're going to go make this one here. Um, 
Send a join request. No, don't press that. That's so that you get a message. Don't do that. You're not, you just be joining the conversation. Okay. Um, but you already are by, by having there. So, okay. So here is, um, one of the rosettes. And remember, I told you it's, it's a lot. It's a lot of cutting. So here's four and two. So there's six total here. And there's really nothing to do here except to hit continue. And choose the um, the material that you're going to use. In this case, it's medium cardstock. Now, because I have a maker, my tool is listed as my scoring wheel, and I I'm choosing medium cardstock. So my scoring wheel only has to be the O1, which it will say here. Oh, one. You see that? And that means that there is one wheel um, because there is actually an O2 that has two wheels that you only use when you're cutting out specialty paper such as glitter, um, heavily patterned, like with, with a lot of, you know, like uh, raised edges and stuff like that or sparkle paper or anything that's kind of like special because um, those tend to crack when folded and so the O2 keeps it from cracking okay so I want to point out also here is where if you have a maker and you don't want to use your scoring wheel or you don't have a scoring wheel, here is where you would choose the scoring stylus. The scoring stylus, unfortunately, though, does not push down as hard as the scoring wheel. So that is going to be a little frustrating if if you use that, but it's doable. OK, so I just kind of wanted to point that out. So if you have an explore, you would use the scoring stylus for this. Now I'm going to take my two um, sheets of cardstock that I have here, this pretty um, XO with gold, and I'm going to put my first one in the machine. I'm going to move you over so you can kind of see what happens here. So, whoop. <laughs> Okay, there we go. So I'm putting this in, and I know you can't see my screen all together, but it is asking me to put in the scoring wheel. If I forget, it will stop and say, hey, you got to load that scoring wheel. So before I get my hand slapped by the machine, I'm going to take out my blade, and I'm going to put in my scoring wheel. I put it in right there. It's like a little cog and it rests up against and I close it. And remember when we're doing scoring, writing and cutting together, in this case, we're doing scoring and cutting. Scoring always comes before the cutting. So you'll always be prompted to put in whatever score your scoring wheel. It always happens before you do the actual cutting. So what the machine's going to do is going to go through and score all um all the score I'm sorry. Okay, you guys. Shh. I'm gonna go no, goodness. Hey. hey, hey, hey. Stop, stop. Somebody's walking their dog and I have the door open. So sorry. Ah. <laughs> okay, shh. Now this paper came from, if you're interested, it did come from a, a Michael's paper pad. I think it was this one, Sweet Talk, that it came from. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that it did, which is, I think they still have, it. yeah, XO, XO, and they have all different kinds here. This is a really nice pad of paper, Sweet Talk, and it was available this year. Um for for Valentine's Day. So you see, it's still going through and doing the scoring. And in this case, I would probably use fast mode, um, which a I don't generally use fast mode. But if I was cutting out a lot, a lot of these to make that backdrop, which I did yesterday. Um, <laughs> oh, Robin, those are my cuties. Those are my cricket cuties. Um, so if I were going to use the, um, the, wh what's the idea? The, the, um, a lot of these, I probably would use fast mode, which is available on the air two and on the maker. It's not available. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, the dogs, they get so excited. <laughs> and oh <laughs> uh, yeah, they're cute. They're cute, but they can be loud. They can be loud too. So here we go. We're doing all of those all of the scoring. And when it's done doing the scoring, my screen is going to say to me um, that I need to add the um, the cutting piece, the my my blade and housing in there. So that I'm gonna do that in just a few seconds when it's done doing all of the scoring. Okay, so I just, while we have this little lull, I wanted to remind you that we will be coming on uh, for Cricket Brunch on Sunday at noon, um, and we're going to be doing, we're going to be working with the Joy, um, and we're going to be cutting out some flowers in different, um, like some double-sided flowers that we'll put on a string of lights, um, and we're, I think I have a string of green lights so we can do like St. Patrick's Day lights um, and if I'm lucky I might have a string of Valentine colored or it might be Eastery pastel so I'll look at what I have and we'll do that on Sunday at noon um, and that's Eastern time but then also this Saturday night at seven o'clock we're going to be doing um, a once a month, we, we just started doing this once a month Zoom call um, where you can call in. There, There is a limit to the number of people that can call in. Um, I think that limit might be 40, but um, last time I think we had like about 40. And what I did was I taped the call from my phone on my computer screen so you could see it actually I did it live so you could if you couldn't make it into the call you could at least watch it live or afterwards okay so now it's doing all the cutting and it's almost done and so while I'm doing that correct yep thank you Emmy he's <laughs> so helpful um so while it's doing that close to my machine Close to your machine, Rita. Close to your machine. This guy? This one, I think he's the pistachio one. That was last fall, I think. Okay, so the cutting is almost done, or it's as done. So I'm going to take it out, and I just want to show you how it comes out. Let me just grab it off of this. Um, and... Here is what we get. We get these pieces or strips, and this one has four on it. And then we got two of those circles. Okay? And let me move you down so we can start um, showing you how to put this together, okay? Yeah, Eastern time. That's I'm on the East Coast. Okay, so once you have all of your pieces cut out, um, what I did yesterday was I cut out a whole bunch um, and I just sort of made a pile of them. And here are some that I cut out, see? And even more, and there are three different sizes. So once you have them all together in the six pieces, what you're going to wanna do is to start folding them. Now for me, the easiest way to do this was to just sort of curl it a little bit. And you'll notice that there is a scoring wheel at the very top of this bracket and then down here. So I just kind of wanted to train the paper a little bit. So I, I just gently folded it like this. Um, and then I'm able to actually do the fold that it needs to get done. So I just do that gently this time. Then I'd start with this end, not the end that has the tab. And I'm going to start with a mountain fold. Do you know what that is? A mountain fold is when you fold it, the fold looks like a mountain. And it's just a various uh, going from mountain to valley 
So you see, that's the mountain fold. There's the valley, mountain, valley. And we just go along and do this for all six pieces of your, um, come on, you guys, for all six pieces of your rosette. And then here at the bottom, <laughs> oh, Santos here to walk the dogs. Um, here at the, at the end is a little tab and we just fold that up. So we're just going to keep doing that where at first I kind of soften the paper like this, you see, and then start at this side and we're going to do mountain fold. And it's important that you do all your pieces the same way. So if you really wanted, um, if you really wanted to do a uh, valley first, I just find um, mountain easier. But if you're going to do valley first, um, you have to do all six of your strips the same way. And that's because when you're putting it together, um, you want to be able to put it together with ease. So here's my four, one, two, three, four, five. And I've got one last one. And let's go ahead and do this and while i'm doing that i'm going to turn on my my industrial strength <laughs> glue gun now please be careful with glue guns because they do burn i did find those little tips that you know you wear on your fingers but of course i didn't find them for this morning i have them but i didn't find them from this morning okay so starting with this end we're going to go mountain valley mountain valley and so on and so on and this is what i mean about this is a lot of work after the fact but the results are pretty amazing so um and sometimes it won't quite fold on that line so you have to force it but most of the time it does it pretty easy okay and then there's our Our tab so once you do that and you'd have to do all the ones that you cut out and I still have more here and then I have my little circles which I've cut out in all different um, kinds of paper and so once you have that what you're going to do is you're going to connect each of the pieces through the tab to each other line them up and connect them this part here you could use liquid glue for but since we are using i want to see if it's still no nope, it's not yet heated up but we're going to connect these all you can either again use liquid glue or the hot glue gun i gotta wait for mine to to heat up it'll just be another second and then we're going to make a long strip okay we're going to make a six strip long strip yes yeah, so these these particular folds are scored and um and i did use my scoring wheel with the maker however um I, um, you can do this with an explore with a scoring stylus. It's not as deep. Um, however, it will, it will give you the line where you need to score it. And then you're creating these accordion type things. Okay. So here we go. I have actually three to do. So I'll show you as soon as my, um, glue gun heats up. This is what I love about glue. So I got this really industrial strength glue gun. Um, my friend, um, Aledra, asked me if I would recommend it. And I, I don't think I would, <laughs> just simply because it's kind of scary. Um, it's like this really huge one. But I, I think I, I'm on the search for the most perfect glue gun. Um, and my friend who loves me so much gave me this one. And um, I'm like, I don't have the heart to say, gee, it's a little scary. <laughs> All right. So let's start. Um, let's hopefully get this going. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it's going. All right, so I'm just going to put, I'm going to try to hold it up to the screen so you can see, but I'm going to put glue here on this whole tab, right, like this. Then I'm going to take my next piece and I'm going to glue it, line it up 
like this, right? So we're making a very long sort of snake-like um, piece. And just do this for, for all six of the cutouts. And watch your hand if you're working with the hot glue. Let's see. And keep moving. Almost there. And this is the last one. Okay. So now we have our six strips and they're a big, big, long uh, piece of strip of paper. And we're going to take the two open ends. Yay, 96 people it chose. Oh, welcome all you new folks. We have a great group going here that um, if you're new, say hello because they will welcome you. Okay, so now we're going to take the um, end, each end, and there is a tab there. So we're going to put the glue on that tab. All right. So now we have a big circle right? And I actually have it facing upward because this part is going to be the out, outside piece, the part that has the bracket. And this side is going to be the inside piece. Now this takes practice, okay? <laughs> um, what you're going to do is put the inside part up and then you're going to start, you need to use both hands and sometimes having a friend help you is good. Um, but you can start by using your hand and you sort of scrunch it all up because what we're trying to do is make a circle. And this is can be frustrating, okay? So give yourself a little patience when you're doing this, all right? But basically, I'm flattening it out to make a circle. Now, sometimes the paper rips, and if that does happen, just go back and put a little bit of glue or even tape um, on the place because sometimes, you know, maybe you scored it too much and that could happen. So don't be afraid if that happens. You didn't just ruin the entire thing. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make this into a circle or a rosette. But, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a little bit of patience learning how to do this. So I just want to show you that it's not... It's not something you just get. You have to kind of play with it. So here we are. So here I finally got it. Now you've got to hold it. Let's make sure this one is attached, okay? You got to hold it sort of closed because if you let go, it's just going to come popping out, okay? And then what you'll do is you will take your circles. There's two circles and they're exact same size or they can be something else, but circles it is the best thing to go, right? So I cut these two circles out. Now I'm going to take my glue gun and I am going to, now that I arrange my uh, rosette to be sort of the way that I want it to be, and I might go a little bit lax on this to make this hole a little bit bigger. Um, and then I'm going to take my glue and this takes practice. All right. And I'm going to put glue all around here and working fairly quickly. I'm going to take my circle and I'm going to place it on there and hold. Okay. Now, you might not get everything in there when you do that. Um, however, that's why we have a circle for the back. So when that sort of got some connection there, 
Oh, now we're playing with squeaky toys. They really want attention today. Okay, thanks, Teddy. Um, so we're going to flip it over. Okay, Teddy. Thank you, honey. And I'm putting some glue here on the back. And I'm going to take my second circle and put that on there. Now I just have to hold like this. All right, and there you go. Now, if you're, if the, the, the thing that you could, um, I know it does sound like a crying baby, but it's a squeaky toy. Um, the thing that could go wrong here is you might have a tear along here. And if that happens, use a little bit of, of tape or it might poof out. And if that happens, you're just going to want to take your glue gun and sort of put it here underneath your circle. But once you get used to it, you have a beautiful rosette. So let me show you that again, because for anybody that might be just joining us or they want to see it again. So I have all six of my um, pieces, my strips, Okay, and each strip has a tab on the end, and they're all folded mountain valley, mountain valley, like this. They're all folded the same way, and I'm going to put glue on each of these strips and make a longer strip, one whole long strip. A little bit of glue from your glue gun, but you can also use liquid glue for this part if you like. Make sure it's lined up. This one's not lined up too well. Okay, and go on, move on to the next one. Glue on this. And I think it's easier to work on a flat surface, but I always try to show you up to the camera, so. <laughs> You'll do better than me because you won't be wondering about how it looks on the camera. Um, okay, so here we go. A little more glue. Until we have all six pieces together in a one long strip. And then once we have all the six pieces together in the one long strip, we're going to connect them the first piece to the last piece to make a loop or circle. So there is second to last piece and here is the last piece. Okay, last piece. All right, so here we go. There's my big loop. I'm gonna take the ends, the two ends, and just connect the first piece to the last piece, just like we did with the tab. First to last. There we go. Hot. I'm actually not burning myself, which is pretty good. There's tons of other edgings, okay? So um, so here it is, here's my big loop, try to get it all in the camera, okay? And we're gonna flip it over. This is the inside edge, that's why I flip it over. And then I'm going to start working using both hands and I'm just gonna start sort of crinkling it back up where I did the folds. And this takes practice, so don't don't beat yourself up if you don't get it right away, okay? So you're going to use both hands and try to make this circle. And when I first learned how to do these, I drove myself nuts. Drove myself nuts, all right? So we have a circle. I'm just holding it here with my left hand so I can get my glue gun. And I might let it go a little bit. I'm going to put the glue right here, not on the inside. Um, I suppose if it were really, really tight, you could put it on the inside. But I put it here on the outside. Whoa. Okay. And this is where you might hurt yourself. <laughs> oh, the craziness of crafting. Okay, so then I'm going to take my circle. 
I'm gonna put it on here and sort of, you can do this if you accidentally, you know, you have this one little opening here, you can kind of make sure before the, that glue sets, sort of make sure you rearrange your pleats, all right? And once you feel like the glue has set, and I'm gonna put a little more glue here because it feels like it's not connected there. But once the glue has set, pretty much, if it still feels not super secure, I'm gonna flip it over, all right? And I'm gonna put my glue on the back side. don't have to be nearly as, and the thing about the circles is, not only does it hold it together, but it hides this, this yucky part where the glue is, so you don't have to be nearly so, um, so careful about, about the glue. So tr try not to, to um, burn yourself. Okay, so now it feels really secure. Um, really secure. And we can then, just to kind of just uh, show you what you can do with this. Yes, I, you could put them, you can either string them on baker's twine or you can uh, put them on like little sticks um, then they sell those sticks in the, in the, um, art store. Teddy, Teddy is very loud today. Um, or what I want to do with these, um, is to layer them like this. Yeah, I'm getting to that PM, um, is I'm going to, once I get all of these done and I do have a lot and I will post a picture when I get done, but once I get all of these done, I'm going to sort of overlap them. Now there will be, it's, it will be a little challenging, but I'm going to overlap them, go up a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about, but overlap them and then glue them together using the glue. If you want, you can use a wreath form to help secure it all together. Um, or you could even use those sticks to create like sticks in the back. But I think I might use a flat wreath form that I have left over. Let me see if I can grab it. Yeah, so this is a flat wreath form. And even though I'm not gonna make it into a wreath, I can use this flat wreath form to start out my, um, my thing and then I take the smaller ones because these are different size this one here is is slight I think it's slightly smaller but I have small I have medium and I have large and then I can just start laying them on top of this wreath form um and and creating my backdrop okay um so these sort of end up being whatever size you want. Now let's see, how big is, is this one? It's uh, eight inches in diameter, you see? Um, and you made this out of two pieces of paper. So you made an, uh, a rosette out of two pieces of paper. And what I did was I cut out some that were in, uh, solids and some that was were in um patterns but all sort of the same color scheme i even did a little green pattern because i like to break up all that red and i'm going to put them all together and create a sort of a backdrop okay um and that is one just one thing um that you can make with rosettes you could also if you wanted to put one on your front door and cut something out here maybe in vinyl that says you know happy valentine's day or you could put three together like this and put it on your door. There's all kinds of things that you could try. And this circle is really kind of utilitarian, so you can feel free to decorate this circle. Now, if these are too big for you, you wanna try the smaller ones, you could always do these rosettes. Remember we did these? 
um, for the winter holidays. That's a rosette and it actually has a snowflake cut out and more snowflakes. And that's what I mean about that middle piece is just a design. And I use these cute little um, snowflake buttons to put on the on the inside, which I might do for this. I don't know. Once I get it all together, I'm going to see how I like uh, it looks with the plain circles, but I could cut out some fancy hearts um, or little cupids or something like that. Um, and yeah, so this is just fun to take it down. You might, you might, if it's all glued together, you might have a little bit of ripping. So do take it down fairly easily. But I, I actually had these up for Valentine's Day. I put them up two years ago and it stayed up all the way until the fall because it looks so pretty. And, you know, who doesn't use a little pop of color in their house? <laughs> my dogs are being so naughty today yeah adding little things or even you know um like I did with the the ornament uh, you know a little some sort of embellishment like that so that is today's Friday 3D project rosettes and I will bring you back to my screen so you can see let me just turn off my um, so you can see all of the different kinds of rosettes. So all you need to do, I'm canceling this, cancel. All you need to do is go into either projects and type the word up here on the right-hand side. Type the word rosette. And I typed a five. R-O-S-E-T-T-E. -E. And it comes up with all of these different projects that you can do. So there's some that are cupcake toppers and some that are shaped and some that are for, for, um, on the top of a, of a, uh, look at these. They're for sandwiches. <laughs> How funny is that? There's a doily with a rosette. Um, there's even a scrapbook and there's a crown. So there's a lot you can do with these. Um, and you it's just kind of your imagination. And we we're talking about the different styles. Here's one that shows, um, an independent state it has like this, this, uh, really pretty star thing. I think this came from, um, s summer soirees or fireworks no ribbons and rosettes it came from ribbons and a rosettes so here's one that has the star now if you don't want to work from a project which is fine you want to make your own thing go instead of projects go to images and you can either type in here rosette um or you can look up those two or three image sets so see all of the rosettes here now not all of them are going to be this design rosette because there are some that are just flat images but you can usually tell these are all the rosettes and look they've put birds and flowers and christmas trees and stars so you don't just have to use the circle but the circle is sort of how these got started and so you can type in rosette or if you wanted to go back to your image sets and Anna has um has a bunch of rosettes in a lot of different places sophisticated soiree um summer soiree and then when you scroll down there's the scoring wheel tricks okay sunflowers yeah these are fun these are a lot of fun i do hope you try them when i'm done with the video i will put the uh file that i was working in with the brackets um in the description okay um and we will and you know that way we can go forward and if people just want to start with this basic bracket rosette i hope you try them because they're really just so much fun and they feel like really solid i don't know how else to explain it um and you don't need to use pattern paper but look at how beautiful this pattern paper makes it's like almost like a starburst really fun and this one here is a pattern so you really get a lot of the colors there and then this one is the stripes which is really fun but don't limit your 
your imagination. Try different things. Try the um, the solid colors and, and everything. And when I'm done with my uh, background, I will post a picture of everything. All right? Um, okay, that's going to do me for today. As much as I love to spend time with you guys, I'm going to have to continue on with my with my uh, rosette backdrop. Um, and I hope I will see you tomorrow. I will post the link for the Zoom call um, on Miss Rita to the Rescue. And um, and I also will videotape it, okay? And then we'll see you also on Sunday um, for our joy project. I'm, I th I'm thinking Sundays are for joy, right? Um, so I think we'll do the joy project on Sundays. And this week it will be um, beautiful paper paper flowers on, on um, strings of lights. So cute. All right. <laughs> Isn't Alaydra fun? She's so sweet. All right, everyone. Thanks for coming today. Really appreciate it. And we'll see you all again really soon. Have a wonderful day. I know I do too. I hate to say goodbye, but what are we going to do? Stay on all day? <laughs> we could actually probably do that. I wonder how long people have done that. But, but you know, there are things that are, need to get done, including playing, paying some attention to these dogs that are crying out for attention today. All right, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.